Hi everyone, let's continue our tour of the SymPy library. So in this video, we're going to discuss the function simplify and some of its cousins that will help us manipulate mathematical expressions. So in the previous video, we saw how to get to the Python workspace and we then imported the SymPy library using the alias sp and we then define three Latin and two Greek variables. So to assign symbols to these variables, we use the symbols function from the SymPy library and we put the symbols we want to assign to these variables in the argument of this function and we want these variables to be real so we set real equal to true we then also define three integer variables so we use the same symbols function but this time of course the list of symbols is different so we type i j and k And we want these variables to be integer so we set integer equal to true and we want them to be positive as well so we set positive equal to true and if we run we're good to go actually in the previous video we committed a typo remember integer so let's go back to the original version we had so that we continue from where we left off now we are good to go. So we can define mathematical expressions, say y equal to x plus x plus z plus let's say 3 times z. Now if we run and check the value of y, we see it has stored it in a slightly different but equivalent form. So it has combined the z's and x's. Remember in our expression we had two terms containing x and two terms containing z. But now if you try a slightly different expression, say alpha times x to the power 3 plus 3 times x to the power 3 and then do the same, which is to run and then check the value of y. You can see this time it has stored it in the same format that we have written it. But if we want to simplify the expression, we can apply the simplify function to it. So let's see what it does when we apply it to the expression y. So in this case, it simplifies the expression by combining the coefficients of x to the power 3. Now the expressions could be slightly more complicated. So it could be say trigonometric, say sine of x divided by cosine of x. And now if we apply the function simplify to this expression, So it simplifies it to tangent of x and let's see the original expression because we had the sp business going on so let's see yeah it is sine of x divided by cosine of x now we don't have to first define the expression and then supply it to the simplify function we can write the expression directly in the argument of the simplify so if you run you get the same result as before now the simplify does a lot of things and you can't predict what it's going to do so you might want more targeted simplification for example we might want to just collect the terms so let's try the expression with the x to the power 3 that we saw before so if you apply collect to it oops we get an error it's because we supplied the expression but we didn't supply what terms to collect so if we type the second argument as x to the power 3 Then you can see it has combined the coefficients of x to the power 3. Let's remove the cluster a bit before we continue. So the collect is just one of the targeted simplifications. There are other varieties as well. So let's try a slightly different expression. So let's say x to the power 2 minus 1 divided by x plus 1. And let's print the expression so that we can see it visually as well. Now we might want to cancel the same terms that appear in both the numerator and denominator. So the cancel function will just do that. So let's apply the cancel function to this expression. 
right? So we get x minus 1. And you can write this cancel function in the form in which we applied the simplified earlier. So you can write the expression as the argument of the cancel function. Now one might have multiple fractions and one might want to apply the rational simplification. So rat simplify function is the function to use. So let's apply it to 1 divided by x plus 1 divided by y. We get slightly complicated expression. Reason being we had defined y is equal to alpha times x to the power 3 plus 3 times x to the power 3. But if we replace y by z, we just stores the symbol z. Then we can easily see the outcome of the rat simplify. Now, if the aim is to combine all the terms using a common denominator, then rat simplify won't achieve the objective to see. Let's add another term, just x, and then run. We see it has combined the fractions, but it hasn't combined all the terms. But worry not, there's another function to do that, is the function together. So let's apply the function together to the same expression x plus 1 divided by x plus 1 divided by z. Now if we run, we can see it has combined all the terms using a common denominator. Now, now in the school days, the first thing we had to do was to simplify the exponent. So the power simplify function does that. And let's apply it to x to the power 5 times x to the power 11 to see what it does. So it does simplify the power by combining the exponents. And this double asterisk, as we know, represents the power. And then along the same line, the other repeat thing was to apply the trigonometric identity. So this is the job of the trig simplify function. And let's apply it to the expression we saw earlier. So it's the sine of x divided by cosine of x. So we get the same tangent x, but this time we know exactly what simplifications are applied. Now the one thing that we used to do repeatedly was to factor quadratic. So let's say quadratic expression x square minus 5x plus 6. And let's see the expression. Now factoring this quadratic is as easy as applying the factor function to this expression. And we can see it has factor the expression. And now we can go back to the previous expression and change it to cubic. So let's say x to the power 3 minus x square plus x minus 1 and let's see the expression now factoring this expression is as easy as rerunning the code so it has factor the cubic for us now and you can try more complicated expression to explore the capabilities of the tool now the relatively intimidating thing the partial fraction so let's say we have been given an expression x minus 5 divided by x square minus 4 times x plus 3. Let's see the expression first. Now remember in the together function we were combining the fractions and here we are creating the partial fraction so we need to use the opposite of together which is a part. So if you apply a part function to this expression, so you will get the partial fraction. Now let's assign this expression to say another expression 1. So this is the partial decomposition we assign to expression 1. And now let's apply the together to this expression. So it should hopefully give us the original expression. So it has combined the two fractions, but it hasn't expanded the denominator. But worry not, the library provides more functions where you can have more control over how you express this expression. The first thing though, we might want to extract the numerator and denominator from this expression. So we use the fraction function. So 
So this will now assign the numerator to n and denominator to d. Actually, we need to apply together to expression 1, remember, to combine the two fractions. And now if you check the value of n, you see it stores the numerator and d, the denominator. And now if you apply the expand to the denominator, you see it has expanded the denominator. So it's the same expression now that we started with. And now if you want to reproduce the whole expression, so we just divide n by the expand of d. And it should hopefully reproduce what we started with. So you can see we have more control over how the output is displayed and what kind of simplification is performed when. Now this expand function is more like the simplify function. So it does a lot of things and we might want more control. For example, we might want to just expand the trigonometric identities. There's a function for that, which is the expand underscore trig. And let's apply it to sign up x plus z. And if we run, you can see it has expanded the trigonometric expression that we have in the argument of the function. And there are other specialized functions for doing specific things. For example, to simplify the power and exponential, we use the expand underscore power underscore exponential. And there's another function for expanding the logarithm as well. There are a few more that you can find in the SimPy online documentation, but I hope this gives you enough to get started. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.